<clears throat> you know, my first prescription many years ago for Nozod was actually very dramatic in the sense. I can just start not talking. We yeah, can yeah, sir. Please go ahead. Feel free. So it was may maybe around fifteen twenty years ago. I was a hardcore follower of Sensation Method, hmm. and uh, it was a case of COPD. I was treating with a single remedy for a long time. and uh, the patient was on prednisolone uh, twice a day 50 uh, around 40 mg and seroflow and salbutamol inhalers <clears throat> and uh, the case came to an animal kingdom then the insects and i gave an insect remedy what happened is the patient started feeling better to an extent the inhaler must have reduced by once a day and things like that but there was nothing happening in the lungs okay the fibrosis stayed the same that is not a case which i am talking about today but that is a case which me helped me turn towards sure. understanding miasms and nosodes deeper and uh, <clears throat> what happened the igm levels were very high he used to go into hypersensitivity sensitivity again and again he used to have these recurrent fevers and uh, he was having bronchial dysis so in my good old bad days when i was uh, operating lungs as my bad history was Okay, so we used to do pneumonectomies for bronchiectasis. Okay, and whenever we used to do these pneumonectomies, my teacher at that time he used to tell me that when a patient comes, you put him on anticox, start the patient on anticox. So I used to tell him, sir, but he is not having cox now. Why do you want him to be on anticox? So he's telling he used to, he was a very old surgeon. You couldn't ask him, you know, the whimsical typical people as teachers you have. Sure. So he used to only tell me that I want the field to be clear. I don't want any spillage when I'm operating. Hmm. So I used to start this anticox, and then we used to get the lungs operated. And here I was seeing that the fevers were coming again and again. So <clears throat> with that understanding, I was reading Basilinum at that time. Okay, and uh, I said, if he says there is an, uh, some bacteria remaining, and I want the field clear, maybe there must be something, isn't it? So why not try basilinum? Okay, and I tried basilinum with an allopathic understanding in a homeopathic way. You know his IgM levels, which were in thousands, reduced in hundreds within first fifteen days. It was a shock of my life. Okay, then his fever started coming down. I repeated basilinum again for a few months. Then that time I was understanding pathological remedies. I started him on theosanimanan. You no, know, to my surprise, Gauran, after one and a half year, one side of his lung was completely clear. He had one lung COPD now. Now it's twenty years down the line. I am seeing the patient still. One lung is clear, is compensated, but the whole pathology reversed. You Now that was the thing that turned me to understand that yes, there is something in homeopathy with the allopathic mm -hmm. understanding, and then I started reading chronic disease to understand it better. So. Basically, that basic past of mine helped me to understand that you require remedies which will turn the pathology, and there is something nosological in between that actually creates the pathology and stays the way it is. And your one single remedy may not cover in many pathological cases. So and basilinum is such a fascinating remedy and such a deep remedy. Yes. And it's it's probably um, very under prescribed because the only thing that i when i was starting up the only thing was ringworm is basilinum and that's such a <laughs> kind of really really small understanding of that remedy because it's so deep mm -hmm. and so many children adults remarkable you know bholana chakravarti the one of a very great home yes, in calcutta he used to give that in almost majority cases of lung cancers for example okay. and even lung fibrosis he yes. would as a first remedy prescription so yes. it was quite fascinating actually your experience also yes 